Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I've got a little product I want to introduce you guys to. A little something that is probably going to make my life a wee bit easier. We'll see how it works out. I have here the quad hands. This unit is to help you do a better soldering job. So let's take a look and see what it does. Now the quad hand comes with these magnetic repositional claws and you can see the medium sized one didn't come with the claw. I don't know if it's meant to. And then you've got two really long ones. So what we're going to do is I'm going to fix this cable right here which goes to a surgical table. They need this one for a surgical procedure. So I'm going to cut the area. I'm going to put my shrink tube down it. And I'm going to utilize these guys here to hold the mass of the cable while I use the longer ones to hold each individual strand of wire together so I can solder them together. So let's take a look and see how this guy does. The first thing I've got to do is I've got to cut out the damaged section of the cord. You see I've got here several inches left and it gets longer as you uncoil it because what we have to do is put on a shrink tube. You ever wonder why I have extra long hemostats and whatnot here behind my workbench? This is why. So you poke the hemostats through the shrink tube, you grab onto the cable, and you pull it through. Trying to shove a coil of cable through heat shrink tube, especially the dual layer shrink tube, you are just gonna be fighting it the whole time. So don't do that to yourselves. Put some hemostats through the shrink tube, grab it and pull it through. And to make this a little bit easier, I always keep a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. I'll dab a little bit on my fingertips, rub it on the outside of the cable. So when I pull it through, it does not want to grab on the inside of the dual layer shrink tube because the dual layer shrink tube is uh, kind of sticky on the inside because of the glue. Man, I'm, I'm really digging this quad hands right here. This is an American made product. And just the fact that I can take some of these guys off if I don't need them, that's gonna be a absolute game changer. So I'm digging it. All right, let's go ahead and feed the shrink tube through so we can begin stripping wires back. Once the shrink tube is pulled through, Pull it down the cable further and give yourself ample room right here to move this cable around, manipulate it, because this is what we're going to be putting on the helping hands. Strip it back a little bit. We're gonna strip this cable probably about an inch down. Uh, I think there's five or six conductors in there. We'll figure it out when I start stripping it down. And then the same is gonna have to be done to this side. I'll only strip back this side here probably about one inch. We strip one back extra long, that's for the inner shrink tubes, and then one we strip back just enough that we can move the wires around. So this one about an inch, this one here about an inch and a half to two inches, we're going to strip it back. Alright guys, you can see here that what I'm doing is I'm stripping back each individual strand, and I'm cutting it about two or three millimeters back, and then I'm soldering the very tips, doing wire preparation. These gaiters normally come with rubber boots on them so that they don't mar your wires. And we will use those for these wires right here because the last thing we want to do is damage this insulation. But I removed the boots because now I'm grabbing the outside wire and I need all the extra grip that I can. And you can see it seems to be doing an excellent job as I separate out each and every single one of these, strip them, and then solder the tips. So far so good. I have my coil that's coming up here. Uh, it's being held by this clamp and I'm using one of my extra long. So they're just curled over the top so that I can tin each the tip of these and then we're all set and ready to join them up. All right, here you can see I've got it set up in the jig and I'm gonna start joining the wires. You can see I have the heat shrink tube down one of my wires. 
The whole purpose to stripping the wire back an inch and a half is so that you can fit a one inch piece of shrink tube on there and you still have a little bit of room to manipulate the wires. And then when you joined them, you're gonna slide that back up and cover the joint. Here, the wires are right next to each other and what I'm gonna do is with one hand, I'm going to join them just like that. And with the other hand, I'm just gonna touch it with the soldering iron and it's gonna be a flawless parallel joint. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, here you can see the wire junction that was made. I pulled the other clamp back so that you can get a better view of it. Now all I'm gonna do, release this clamp. We're gonna slide the heat shrink tube up over the joint. And then we're gonna shrink it down. All right, it says one down, six more to go. Okay guys, I wanna update you on what's been going on. So as I connect these wires, since it's already in a natural twisted pattern, one side of the cable is gonna slowly twist as you connect the strands and it naturally bundles them together like this. This brings me to another point on why this quad hands seems to be a very good product because I can move the arms. As I twist this cable, its natural tendency is to pull my arm. So I just detach the magnet, move it over a little bit so that it relieves the strain. And I continue on with my joining wires. So far so good guys, almost done. All right guys, I'm gonna show you one more feature on this uh, quad hands that I bet a lot of people don't know about or they don't talk about. And I definitely had to utilize on this kind of a job. See here, as you unscrew the clamps, there's a knurled nut right behind it. And what this acts as is a jam nut. So you position it exactly how you want, and then you tighten the jam nut against the clamp, and it's holding. So that means I can rotate something in the clamp, like wires, and then you just keep using the jam nut to hold it in place. What a cool feature. One more finishing touch to this assembly is going to be these guys right here. So what we do is we take a larger diameter piece of shrink tube and we put a slit down the side of it. And then I wrap around the wires near the edges of all the connections. Now the true way to do this would be to stagger the wires, have some longer on one end and shorter on the other. That way there, you don't have a big ball right in the middle. But for time savings, I'll do this. And all it's really doing is filling in the spaces so when the shrink tube comes over top of it, it doesn't have a big bulge in the middle and two empty spaces on the sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and shrink tube it with this guy right here. Here I'm gonna show you the final product. You can see there's no major bulge in the middle. I added the filler, which is the wraparound heat shrink here and here. So that is a completed cord. It's got a little bit of glue that squirts out at both sides. That's because I'm using the dual layer heat shrink tube. And while it's not the most aesthetic thing, this will definitely get them up and get going because this bond is just as strong as this right here. You can put all your weight on it and pull on it. It'll be just fine. But this is gonna get them up and going for tomorrow morning. They're gonna be able to use their table for the cases and we'll just order a replacement cable. This guy seems to be well worth the money. Thanks for watching.